new course and hello and welcome to another edition of between two out i'm your host tom price and with us today we have rose mcginnis from our computer and information science department welcome rose hi tom thanks for joining us today so uh where did you grow up rose I am a Philly girl. Grew up not very far from campus. Um, uh, in a, believe it or not, I grew up in Kensington. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. And did you have any interesting nicknames or or games or instruments you played as a kid? Um, no nicknames, and none that I would ever admit to anyway. Um, <laughs> I am not the athletic type. I am probably more athletic now in my adulthood than I was as a child. Um, but I was a music geek. So I played piano, guitar, believe it or not, I played church organ like at masses mm -hmm, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And my all time favorite thing was in high school, I played the harp. Really? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yep. I was in a piece one time that was choreographed uh, and it had a live harpist that performed with us, which was really, really cool at Temple, actually. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, in fact, I always say to everybody, if I win the lottery, the first thing I, I would buy is a harp. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, and so where did you go for your undergraduate? So I am the epitome of Temple Made. Um, back when I was coming here, there was um, a slogan for Temple that I could have gone anywhere, but I went to Temple or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, that was me. Um, I am first generation. My parents were born and raised in Ireland and came to this country as teenagers. Um, and I grew up in the neighborhood and truthfully, the only place I could afford to go was Temple. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it had good education and it had what I wanted to study. Um, so I what? went to Temple. I always knew I wanted to study computer science. Really? Always. I took a class my senior year of high school that had um, a, 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 computers, a computer in it. And let me tell you, that's not what you would call it today. And <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I have a picture in my high school yearbook with me holding a sign that says output. So that's how geeky I was even back then. Um, oh. And I, I was just totally fascinated by it. And I never changed course. Um, it just, I just thought it was the coolest thing. And do you have any memorable experiences from your undergraduate time that you wish to share with us? <laughs> um, no, I was the, you know, back when I went to Temple, it was a commuter school. So at 4.30, the streets rolled up and everybody went home. Um, so there, it wasn't the party school, it wasn't the fun school that it is today. Um, and being a commuter student, like I just came, went to class and went home. Um, so not too much really. Um, no, not too much, except even back then there were so few girls in our classes. I mean, it was pretty, pretty mm -hmm. empty. Um, other funny thing is that Frank Friedman was actually one of my professors. And did he sort of encourage you to continue oh, in yeah. the field? Yeah. Oh yeah, he was great. He was always really good, yeah. And so then what, so tell us about your career path post, like post-graduation. Um, you know, I was really lucky. I, my first job out of college um, was with the company that I actually stayed with for 16 years um, because I was always given really nice opportunities with that, um, or in that organization. And it's actually the company that writes the banner software. Um, oh, wow. And I, yeah, I started as a coder, as a programmer, mm -hmm. and um, went all the way up to being the banner student product manager. So I would go all around the country, meeting awesome. with all the schools, figuring out what was coming in the next release, what did we need to update, all those kind of things. Um, and I really, really, really loved that company and that job. Um, I eventually moved into human resources and talent acquisition for them because they had gotten to the point where they decided one year they were going to hire 150 college graduates and they had never hired one in, in mm -hmm. like 10 years. So um, I took that project on and um, took over recruiting for that company. And um, that year we hired 150 college graduates and put them to work. It was really cool. And so how did you begin your professional career at Temple? Um, Frank Friedman. Um, so if you think networking isn't important, I can tell you it is. I always stayed 
um, connected um, to the mm -hmm. computer science department. Um, I, I really um, had formed good relationships with them while I was in school. And then I came back and recruited here when I worked in industries. So um, I had known Frank and Frank had had a full-time job opening for a faculty member. And he called me up and he said, do you wanna do this? And I said, I can't do it now, but I know somebody else who can. And they eventually hired that person for a full-time job. And then that person five years later said, we have another opening for an adjunct, you wanna take it? And I said, yeah, let me try it. So that's how I, and then I moved from an adjunct into a full-time faculty member. Awesome. Network. And so what do you like about Temple students? Just about everything. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, I love the diversity of Temple students. I love that I can spend all day talking to different students. No two stories are the same. No two backgrounds are the same. No two, you know, no two places where they went to high school or where they grew up or their nationality or their ethnic ethnicity are the same. And I just think that is just so mm -hmm. great. Um, I also like the fact that they're all hardworking. They, they, they have to work hard to be here. They have to work hard to stay here. And when they go out into the world, they continue to work hard. So I'd say that that's my two big favorite things about Temple Schools. So I'm gonna shift gears a little bit, talk about some other things. So do you have a significant other? I do. I met my significant other as a senior in high school and have been married forever. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And what do you appreciate most in your friends? That's a good one, Tom. Um, friendship, just plain art of friendship, just caring about someone, being there when they need them or when you need them and um, sharing the goods and the bads, you know, just the general mm -hmm. definition of friendship. And what would you say is your main fault? Oh, there are many, Tom. <laughs> Main fault, main fault. i not really good at saying no. Mm. Um, I tend to take on a lot of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like new adventures. I, um, I I joke sometimes that I like shiny new objects. Oh, that looks cool. I think I could do that. And then I <laughs> so That's probably my number one fault. What are you currently reading? Oh, well, um, The Vanishing Sister. Um, but know. my, yeah, it's a popular novel. I think it's called The Vanishing Sister. <laughs> I have to check on the name of the book because I, my preference is audiobooks. So no, excuse me, The Vanishing Half, but it's about twin sisters. Um, mm -hmm. But my, my most recent favorite read was The Long Bright River by the Temple author. So I would highly recommend that read if you haven't read it. It's about Philly and all different kinds of things. So cool. And what do you like to do for fun? Travel. So do you have a dream destination or a favorite place you've been? Um, I have lots of favorite places. I have I have my next place I want to go. Um, Where's that? That's Portugal. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And what was one of your top three places you've been? So my top three places would be Ireland because I'm Irish. And my, fam my entire family is in Ireland. My mom and dad were the only ones who came here. So all my family's in Ireland. Um, Greece, oh, just so beautiful. I know Tom, we've talked about this. My yes, one of my I do. favorite places. And then any of the national parks. Um, that's, you know, people talk about bucket lists, but my bucket list is to get to as many national parks as I can, because they're just amazingly beautiful. Cool. Um, what kind of music do you like to listen to? Just about everything. Um, I love jazz. I love uh, classical music, and I love just plain old top hits um, of the day. What's your favorite thing to do in Philly? Eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, where where would you like to eat in Philly? Um, I love quirky new restaurants. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll eat in any restaurant, but I love <laughs> new restaurants, you know, like, you know, a new Thai place or a Vietnamese place or um, I like, I love to cook. So I like to eat any place that I wouldn't make the food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. What would be the title of your autobiography? 
that's a hard question. I've, I, I'll give you one minute to think, not a minute, but I'll give you a moment to ponder that. I think it would be that she did good. And that oh, encompasses a lot of things, you know, um, you know, being, you know, from an inner city first generation mm -hmm. kid to getting the, you know, to doing this for a career, um, to giving back. I mean, I really, I really look at my job as a giving back. Um, I could have stayed in industry, but this feels better. Um, mm -hmm. And, and also that, you know, helping others, right. Helping the next generation of students and the next generation of um, women and underrepresented minorities in my profession is really important to me. Cool. I'm going to shift gears. We're going to do something called the rapid fire response. I'll give you two words. You just state your preference or pass. Tea or coffee? I know oh, the tea. answer. <laughs> Morning or night? Both. <laughs> dark or milk chocolate? Oh, dark. Offense or defense? I don't care. <laughs> Dogs or cats? Dogs. Bert or Ernie? Ernie. Half full or half empty? Always half full. Hot or cold? Hot. City or seashore? Oh, seashore. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for being on our show today, Rose. Great talking to you.